government problem has been solved with government band-aid, which has been solved by government band-aid. So if you pull off government band-aid, you have three more broken band-aids underneath it that sometimes make things worse. Mm -hmm. The EPA was not meant to go out and, and harass Oregonians and, and murder or Oregonians. Hey, where's the love for one another? Government doesn't love us. That's what we need. We need to get back to a system where people can take care of one another. What you're inferring is, you know what? If we legalize heroin tomorrow, everybody's going to use heroin. How many people here would use heroin if it was legal? I bet nobody would put the hand, oh yeah, I need the government to take care of me. I don't want to use heroin, so I need these laws. Welcome to Logan for Liberty. Thank you for joining me. I'm coming at you from the Pacific Northwest where the sun shines so bright just to rain a few hours later. It's been a little while since I've done a podcast. Um, I always have an excuse for every time I take a hiatus and then I come back with a video. This is podcast number 23. I have some videos in the pipeline that I'm currently working on. Um, I uploaded a video on the 9th of October. I have a video scheduled for August 12th. And then I have a video that I just recorded that I still need to edit, which I will probably end up uploading either on the 13th or the 14th. That will have it scheduled. Let me open my uh, Red Bull real quick. I've had a lot of stuff going on, some, some health issues, uh, a changing of employment, and going through that process. Um, I'm working on a side, uh, another side channel for YouTube. It's not on my personal account. It is through the account of one of my friends. Um, it's not related to politics whatsoever, so I'm not, I don't feel comfortable plugging it just yet from this channel. I'm going to wait until it grows a little bit. So for now, I'm just going to keep that my own separate thing. Eventually, if there's clips that I feel like are relevant to my Logan for Liberty channel, then I will upload the clips, but that is only when I feel I have made the decision when I'm ready to start connecting my channels. Plus, this channel that I am working on as a side thing, I, I show my face. Um, and I don't have a problem with showing my face. I stand behind my convictions and everything I believe. Um, I don't necessarily still believe everything I have said on this channel from the beginning. I've said a lot of stuff. Maybe some things I regret. However, I still stand by the fact that I said it because I think everything I said has had good intentions and it has been pure of heart and no bigotry or anything was ever meant. And I don't think I've said anything bigoted. I don't think I am a bigot whatsoever. So I'm not ashamed of what I said before. So it's not like that. But I'm not making money from this. This is more of a passion hobby. I am just interested in this. I am a junkie. And I am saying stuff that might be considered controversial to those who disagree with me. And we live in a climate that is pretty um, unstable as far as uh, political and cultural conversations go. Um, there's, there's a lot of doxing related to a lot of this stuff. There's been threats of violence. We've all seen the Antifa stuff kind of pick up. Um, Antifa had its first mass shooter. Um, there's some violence coming from the other side as well. And they pretty much feed into each other. It's like a, a positive feedback loop and it only grows the violence more. Fortunately, most people who don't actively seek out this sort of conflict, for the most part, can remain unscathed. There have been stories of innocent people getting hurt, people who are just protesting and not actually partaking in any violence, but because they chose to go to the ground zero of this conflict between two ideological sides that really dislike each other, even if they agree on certain aspects of the state existing or certain uh, things that they both agree that the state should ultimately do. It comes from different intentions, I think. Maybe it comes from a different place in their heart. Um, I think both these sides are statists for the most part, but I, I think that's, I think I've made my point clear is that, um, Things are too unstable, and I don't make any money from this. It's just a passion project, so I'm not going to you know, link to my other channel until I'm 100% comfortable showing my face behind the political stuff that I do. However, this is my passion. This is my hobby. So, just to tell you what's been going on with me, or what I plan on doing for the channel, some things 
that I have uh, uh, in the pipeline that will be uploaded recently. I have... I did a video that I uploaded on the 9th of August, and today is the 11th as I'm recording this. Um, the video is something that I wrote a couple weeks ago that I decided to finally get around to recording and uploading. The title of it is Judge Ideas Based on Their Extreme. I kind of wanted to follow up to that. And I also want to talk about my plans of exploring objectivism. And I have another video in the pipeline talking about war because I've made a couple videos before talking about war. And I feel like war is one of those topics that I can always talk about because it is always happening. There's so much I can say. It affects so many people. There exists so many different stories of war affecting people, economy, country, and I, I can integrate it into almost every single aspect. So, um, one, a, a series that I am working on right now is my journey into objectivism. I have the first part uploaded. It's not scheduled. It is scheduled for August 12th. Uh, it's 2019 at 8 a.m. Pacific time. Um, it's more of an introduction video. I have three parts of my journey into objectivism written. I have the audio recorded for three parts. I am currently reading Atlas Shrugged by Ayn Rand, and that will encompass the fourth part and maybe the fifth part because Atlas Shrugged is such a huge book. So I don't know how long I want the video to be. The videos will be between... 4 and 20 minutes, so it depends. I am a little over a quarter of the way through Atlas Shrugged. It is a huge read. It's taken me a little longer than I than I am expecting. And the reason being is because I'm not only just reading Atlas Shrugged, I just read Anatomy of the State by Murray Rothbard. I'm also reading Philosophy 101. Philosophy 101 was something that I was uh, reading sort of on my own, but I decided to read the gist of what philosophy is. Because I felt like before I dived into objectivism, it is something that I figured would be important for me to at least have a simple grasp on so I can at least understand the basic tenets of objectivism a lot more or have a better understanding of objectivism. I'm not halfway through the I do I take notes of nonfiction books that I read for the most part when it comes to facts or concepts that I, I want to remember so I could go back on. Uh, for example... Well, let me look at my uh, my book. I have right here. You can't see it because I'm doing audio. I have a five-subject college rule notebook with 200 sheets that are. It's almost this singular book is almost filled entirely with notes. I think I'm on the last two subjects essentially. I'm working on uh, the third subject out of five, but so far I have notes on. Liberty Defined, uh, 50 Essential Issues by Ron Paul. The Revolution of Manifesto by Ron Paul. Swords into Plowshares by Ron Paul. In the Fed by Ron Paul. Economics in One Lesson by Henry Hazlitt. How an Economy Grows and Why It Crashes by Peter Schiff. The Declaration of Independence, not independence like uh, the state of independence, but an independent plural. Um, How Libertarian Politics Can Fix What's Wrong with America by Nick Gillespie, I think it's Gillespie, and Matt Welch. Common Sense Economics, I'm currently working on that one by L. Albert Hun. Uh, Philosophy 101, which is the book I'm reading by Paul Keenman. Anatomy of the State by Murray Rothbard. And right now, The School Revolution by Ron Paul. So I kind of went over the books I'm reading, but just to give a general overview... Right now, I'm working on Ayn Rand, uh, Atlas Shrugged, because it's going to be part of my series of me diving through objectivism. Let me touch upon that real quick before I go on to the next books that I am reading. So, the first video for my journey into objectivism part one is me basically going over why I decided to go into this journey into objectivism what I know about it without actually having read any of Ayn Rand's works. So far, I have read Anthem. I am currently reading Atlas Shrugged. And I have heard some lectures and debates by Yaron Brook. I've listened to his radio show slash podcast a little bit. I've listened to interviews with Mark Pellegrino, the actor who plays Lucifer in Supernatural. 
I also know him from the TV show The Returned, which was a great short-lived show in my opinion. I don't think it had enough time to flesh out before it got cancelled after the first season. Also, um, Rucka Rucka Ali, or Rucka Reacts, uh, the parody rapper slash, um, I guess, YouTube intellectual, I don't know how I'd pronounce him, he's just a YouTuber, he talks about objectivism, he reacts to certain things on the internet, he's, he's just a YouTuber, and he does parody raps on Rucka Rucka Ali, it is absolutely hilarious. So... That is as far as I know about objectivism. I do consider myself a libertarian, and I've heard so much about Ayn Rand from both sides. I've heard that her literature is dreadful um, from somebody named Christopher Hitchens, and he is quoting, you know, I love literature, but her books are unbearable, or something like that. I've heard Jordan Peterson, who is somebody I admire, even though I don't agree with a lot of what he says. I do think some of what he says does more harm than good. But there is a, the main message of Jordan Peterson, I think, is good, although I disagree with him on... Basically, it sounds like I disagree with him on epistemology and metaphysics, which is something I can get into later. That might be the next series after I do my journey into objectivism. Um, What was I trying to say the main point anyway i don't know that much about objectivism so i want to dive into it and um yeah so so the first part my journey into objectivism part one is about that in general i consider myself a libertarian uh, and yeah yeah that's right um i was talking about people's reactions to jordan peterson I mean, Ayn Rand. Um, so there's that aspect. Then there's the Ben Shapiro, Dennis Prager aspect. Well, Dennis Prager says something along the lines of that um, Ayn Rand's work against socialism was fantastic, but she went too far to the other extreme, which is selfishism, which apparently is an extreme, you know, just like socialism, whatever. Um, that wasn't really an answer to me. He didn't say specifically what. Also, I'm familiar with Michael Malice, who is an anarchist, but he is a Randian, as in he agrees with a lot of what Ayn Rand says. He doesn't agree with her on everything, so he's not an objectivist, but he is a Randian, because part of his intellectual influence, I would say, is entirely dependent on Ayn Rand. Michael Malice is a multifaceted individual, but there is a lot of influence from Ayn Rand, just like there's a lot of influence from other people but he is very, he is an admirer of Ayn Rand. Uh, ben Shapiro, you know, basically says that with too much reason, you know, you can become tyrannical. With too much religion, you can become too tyrannical. So you need this perfect blend between religion and reason, which to me doesn't make any sense. What exactly is he rejecting from Ayn Rand? He basically says the same thing that Ayn Rand is... She rejects altruism, and sometimes doing stuff for other people is good, something like that. But when I've heard objectivists respond to that point, they're basic, they, they say that, no, it's not that you can't help other people. That, that's that whole thing that I want to get into, but they, they had a visceral reaction to that type of criticism of Ayn Rand, basically making it clear that these people who I generally like or liked, like Ben Shapiro, Jordan Peterson, Dennis Prager, uh, Christopher Hitchens, there's people that either dismiss her or they have a criticism about her but haven't actually read her work. And I knew of her book, Anthem, and I'm a huge fan of Lois Lorry's The Giver. I'm a huge fan of The Hunger Games and all that, so something about Anthem really enticed me. So I decided, all right, I'm going to check out objectivism for myself because Michael Malice, this non-objectivist, but who is a Randian, you know, sees her as a huge influence. A lot of these objectivists seem to respond to the half-witted criticisms against her from people who I generally trust, like, again, Ben Shapiro, Dennis Prager, Jordan Peterson, and Christopher Hitchens. And even one of my ideological heroes, he didn't dismiss her. I'm talking about Ron Paul. Ron Paul in his book, uh, Liberty Defined, towards the end, he has a section based on objectivism, I think, or Ayn Rand. 
he gives her props, but and he doesn't disagree. He he criticizes some of her beliefs in a different way than Ben Shapiro did. So I found it interesting that one of my intellectual heroes could have something to say about this individual. So I wanted to learn firsthand the negatives of Ayn Rand, or if there's anything I disagree with. So that's the first part, is me describing how I discovered it, why I'm going into it. My journey into Objectivism Part 2 is me giving a bare-bones understanding of what philosophy is, because I feel as if philosophy is important to at least have a basic concept of, which will allow me to become even more enlightened from reading Ayn Rand's books if it is as philosophical and amazing as people say it is. Plus, objectivism is a philosophy, so is it not important that I know philosophy? I think it is. Part three, uh, I read the book Anthem. So at this point, I've read Anthem. And I decided to cover uh, some some aspects of Anthem. Um, Anthem is a really short read, and I wanted to read it for a while. I discovered it senior year, but I never got around to reading it until recently. And so far, it seemingly touches on politics... Ethics and kind of logic, I think. Doesn't really have much to say about aesthetics or metaphysics or epistemology, I don't think. Um, as far as I can tell, if there are elements of that, then that's fine. Whatever. So that's what I'm working on right now. That's the main series I'm working on. Part 1's uploaded tomorrow, or scheduled to uh, tomorrow. And then more will be coming down the pipeline. I have... Uh, three, the first three parts recorded, one completely edited, the other two I have to edit and then upload. Uh, so to go on to what I'm reading, so obviously I'm reading Atlas Shrugged by Ayn Rand. I'm over a quarter of the way through it. Um, I'm enjoying this book. I will admit I have struggled to read it at first. I don't think, and it's not because, um, I think her writing's bad. I get into these bits where I read as much as I can, and then I get into these bits where I'm distracted by other things, or I'm not uh, disciplined enough to actually sit down and read. Other than that, I am hooked on this book. I don't understand the criticisms about her writing because I like the anthem. So far, I'm liking Atlas Shrugged. I'm loving Dagny uh, Taggart. I'm loving the dynamic between Dagny uh, Taggart and uh, Reardon, Hank Reardon. That plot line interests me for some reason because there's something that happened in the beginning of the book that kind of teased what would happen later on, even though I'm in the first quarter, that I really just, I wanted to happen and I feel satisfied in that way. The writing to me is descriptive. It's beautiful in that way. Maybe the writing's not for everybody. At the very least, I recommend that people at least try to listen to this on audiobook as they're driving, exercising, or just doing something randomly. Have it on as white noise. I'm enjoying this book personally, and this is gonna be one of the, this is gonna be a difficult book because it's so thick to actually parse and try to go through every single philosoph philosophical theme or any theme in general, whether or not it's related to philosophy. This is definitely going to be a difficult book to parse in a detailed way. There will probably be a lot that I miss. As long as I get the gist, and I'm definitely going to put in an effort to do as much detail as I can. And I already mentioned that I'm reading Philosophy 101, because I wanted a basic understanding of philosophy and different philosophers. And I figure, what did, you know, what better way than to get a general concept of not only philosophy, but the different philosophers and schools of philosophy that these uh, specific philosophers inspired and I can kind of see how it affects how the philosophies today affected some of or how the philosophers from back then affected many aspects of today so far the philosophers that I've read about who I actually enjoy um, it seems like Aristotle is my man uh, for the most part um, I like the Socratic method from from Socrates and all that but not a huge fan of Plato. There is... Uh, I can't exactly remember because I'm still studying it. There's a few things that Plato uh, wrote about that I like. I completely reject Plato's cave. I like uh, his philosophy through written conversation. I like 
I hate the theory of uh, forms. I think the theory, the triperiot theory of the soul is a little whack. It makes sense in maybe in a, in a, a metaphorical way. I do like his emphasis on the importance of education. Um, I mean, there's there's a lot that I could. I like his uh, focus on the individual. So there's some stuff I like from Plato. But other than that, Aristotle is my man so far. There's still a bunch of other stuff I have to read. Um, I don't know again how I feel about Ayn Rand's philosophy, objectivism yet. The parts that I seem to like are what I would consider in line with libertarianism. But that's just the, the political aspect. I'm sure there's going to be something that's either really difficult for me or that I just don't understand yet. So that's Philosophy 101 by Paul Kleeman. I started reading this before I decided to do a journey into objectivism. Because I wanted to have a general grasp of philosophy. And then, you know, build on from there. The next book I'm reading, which I've been working on for a while. I just, I've been so unfocused. And have started, you know, doing a bunch of other stuff. Before this book, I read, you know, uh, Economics in One Lesson by Henry Hazlitt. I also read uh, How an Economy Grows and Why It Crashes by Peter Schiff. I'm learning about, Aus not only economics, I'm also learning about Austrian economics. So I'm diving into, again, you know, the stuff. I bought a bunch of books from the Mises Institute. Um, event I, I plan on reading... Common Sense Economics by L. Albert Hahn. It seems to this seems to be the perfect continuation of Economics in One Lesson and uh, Why an Economy Grows or How an Economy Grows and Why It Crashes. It's a little mundane and redundant after reading those books, but it adds a a new perspective on the entrepreneurial side. So I'm enjoying it so far. I'm a quarter of the way through this book to. And I'm currently taking notes on it as well. After this, this will be my last economic book until I finish my journey into objectivism. After that, I plan on just diving straight into Austrian economics. Let me grab the books right here. I'm going to grab them. I'm going to read the books. And I'm going to read the books in this specific order when I really start diving into Austrian economics. Um, I understand the free market aspect. So I think I'm going to try to, you know, get general concept and then go deeper and deeper. So when I start diving into Austrian economics again, the first thing I'm going to read is Profit and Loss by Ludwig von Mises. Um, I am a huge fan of the Mises Institute. I am part of the Mises Caucus for the Libertarian Party. After Profit and Loss by Ludwig von Mises is going to be an introduction to Austrian economics by Thomas C. Taylor. And I can't wait to read that. These are all short reads, so I think it's a great idea to you know build up my basic understanding. Um, Austrian macroeconomics, a dime. Uh, a diagrammatical exposition, sorry, by Roger W. Garrison. I'm going to read that. And then I'm going to read The Case for 100% Gold Dollar by Murray Rothbard. After that, it's going to be The Case for Gold, a Minority Report for, of the U.S. Gold Commission by Ron Paul. It was back when he was in Congress. And then after that, it's going to be The New Case for Gold by James Rickards. Um, I, I don't know if this guy is an Austrian uh, economist or if he, you know, goes for the Austrian message. But any book that is about a case for gold that isn't written by somebody who Austrian economists typically hold up on a high mantle interests me. So it'll be a nice juxtaposition. Plus on the back, it has a quote from Ron Paul saying this excellent book proves that contrary to the propaganda of fiat currency apologists, gold is real money. Rickards makes a compelling case for why those looking for a way to protect themselves and their families from economic chaos created by central bankers should consider gold. So since Ron Paul gave it a glowing review, that's definitely what's going to make me read that. After that, I'm going to go into What Has the Government Done to Our Money by Murray Rothbard. And then that's when we get into what I feel is the quintessential thick book of economics that is not for beginners that beginners should not pick up from what i've heard is human action 
uh, a treatise on economics by Ludwig von Mises. I think after reading all of these books, you know, all the books I just listed, and then, of course, Economics in One Lesson, How an Economy Grows and Why It Crashes, and then Common Sense Economics, I think I will be ready for human action. I just, I want to be extra prepared. And then after that, uh, he's technically a Chicagoan, but I'm going to read some Thomas Sowell. Uh, because his book, Trickle-Down Theory and Tax Cuts for the Rich, it's a tiny, tiny, almost pamphlet-length read. You could probably get it for free online. It's probably published somewhere in an article, but I wanted the physical copy because I'm going to read this in a heartbeat after I go through my initial grind of Austrian economics. Plus, I feel like, uh, you know, dismantling the whole trickle-down theory and tax cuts for the rich arguments is a free market defense that Austrians could get behind. I will judge that later. But, um, and I feel like on my own, I have a pretty decent argument against what is called trickle down economics or what is thrown around as trickle down economics, which is basically a straw man and tax cuts for the rich and all that stuff. That's a straw man of what I feel is free market economics. But why not have, of course, an expert economist? You know, why not read something of him, you know, tackling that issue? So those are the books that I am working on right now. I'm reading, well, I'm reading four right now. Um, I'll probably, yeah, that's what's on the pipeline for right now. After I read Ayn Rand, I went to a bookstore a town away a few months ago. I planned on reading Ayn Rand a while ago, but I'm now actually just really getting to it. I bought a whole bunch, they had a bunch of Ayn Rand books, so I just bought them. Uh, they're up there, I can't read them all, but I definitely got The Fountainhead. I got We the Living, I got a Romantic Manifesto. And then I bought... I bought some other stuff. I'm gonna get some books by Euron Brook as well, and just really dive into objectivism. Austrian economics and objectivism are going to be my main, you know, dive into's to completely, at least, thoroughly understand. I'm really going to concentrate on objectivism first and, you know, work on my understanding of Austrian economics as well. So, a video that will be coming up after this, after the first part of my journey into objectivism is a video where I talk about how war is the health of the state. And what inspired me to make this video was I read Anatomy of the State by Murray Rothbard. You should 100% get it. It's almost, it's only 50 pages. Easy read. And it offered a perspective. Even though I consider myself a libertarian and anti-statist, I have been kind of an apologist for constitutionalism and minarchism. And I've been really resisting the push towards anarcho-capitalism, but this book, Anatomy of the State, as simple as it is, just opened up new perspectives that I may have heard before from other anarchists, but Murray Rothbard wrote it in such a way that it finally clicked with me. I'm not an anarchist. I'm still resisting that pull. I don't know. There's some stuff I still have to work out in my head. It is a poll that I am resisting. But I am... I am a lot more... I, I feel more respect for the anarcho-capitalist position than I did before. Um, I'm a huge fan of Ron Paul, who I don't think is an anarcho-capitalist. I think he is as close to an anarcho-capitalist as a minarchist constitutional sort of guy can get and Ron Paul has a huge amount of respect for Murray Rothbard who is an anarcho-capitalist Murray Rothbard has a huge amount of respect for Ludwig von Mises who was not an anarcho-capitalist who at best can be described as a minarchist so the fact that there's this respect among the Mises community Mises Institute crowd that is something that uh, has inspired me to to actually dive into arguments written by anarcho-capitalists. Plus, I think, me as a libertarian, and who knows, maybe I'll become an objectivist. I can't say at this point, because I'm still not entirely 
100% sure about the philosophy of objectivism. I, I sympathize with the anarcho-capitalist position. And maybe philosophically I'm there with the anarcho-capitalist position. Maybe I agree with them on almost everything. And I have shifted towards listening to anarcho-capitalists. I listened to Tom Woods, fantastic historian, great guy, Christian type of fellow. I think maybe a Catholic type of fellow. The dude is so intelligent. The Tom Woods show is fantastic. He is an anarcho-capitalist. Michael Malice, he's not an anarcho-capitalist, but he is an anarchist, and I can respect... He feels more comfortable defending anarcho anarchy than he does capitalism, which is fine. Plus, I think if... I can't say anything, but he reminds me of what an anarcho-capitalist would be. I've been listening to Dave Smith, who is a Jew and an anarcho-capitalist, so I've been listening to a lot of anarcho-capitalists, and I like a lot of their arguments. A lot of their arguments make sense, even if I might disagree about, you know, the role of government in certain aspects. So, I don't know. It's, it's a push that I am resisting. So, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see how this... Uh how this turns out towards the end of my intellectual journey. I am just going headfirst into reading all of this different literature, writing stuff for videos because my inspiration has been through the roof. Oh, as I was saying about my video, which is about how war is the health of the state, when reading Anatomy of the State by Murray Rothbard, he quotes a certain individual, I can't remember their name, Basically saying that war is the health of the state. And in Anatomy of the State, Mary Rothbard really breaks it down by describing, you know, what do people think of the state? What is the state actually juxtaposed to what people think of the state? How does the state preserve itself? Why does the state preserve itself? Why does the state grow? And everything like that. And he specifically talked about how war is one of these instruments that the state uses to keep and gain power. And to me... Like, I understood that concept, but the way he described it, I didn't know that I understood the concept conceptually the way I do now, because of Murray Rothbard. And not only was the inspiration from that, from reading Ron Paul and all the stuff he wrote about war, I also used as an inspiration to write this short video, which will be anywhere from two to six minutes, we'll see, depending on editing. I just finished recording it. I just need to edit it. It's going to be a decently edited video in my opinion. It'll be very, very um, informative in my opinion. And that's all for today. I just wanted to give you guys an update. You know, Let you know what's coming down the pipeline. Talk about these ideas as a shotgun blast real quick. Just shotgun it out there. See what everybody thinks. Upload some content. Have another episode for my podcast. I hope you're all having a fantastic day. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. What books do you think I should read next? If you have any video ideas, please comment in the comment section below and have a good one.